So it's been a few years since they invented the first power supply for the Game Gear called the Clean Power. That replaced the original Game Gear power supply with a modern power supply and a USB-C input. The Clean Juice was an adaptation of that that then used LiPo batteries instead of AA batteries. And that's been around now for a few years and there's many now alternatives on the market as well. But in them years and thousands of people using the board, I've managed to gather some feedback and add some improvements. So that's what we're going to look at now. This prototype again was made and sponsored by PCBWay. So they've helped to make this board and a few more samples. And I've used them before on the last couple of jobs and I'm really enjoying working with them. You can get your PCB made on its own. You can get full assembly like I've got here. You can get flexible circuit boards, CNC ports, which I really want to try soon. And the prices and delivery time are second to none. I've used many other fab houses in the past and including my main fabrication house, PCB way are often lots quicker than they are too. So I might even consider them for volume pricing next. So thanks again PCB way for sponsoring this. And now let's get on to identifying the differences first and what improvements I've done. And then let's bring this board up and test. So you can see compared to the original, the first thing you'll notice is a whole array of LEDs now to indicate when we have a battery, when the power's turned on with the switch, when the five volts working, when the 34 volts on and working, and there's a few new switches. So the 34 volt switch is now correctly oriented so that the on of the power switch is actually on. And that's due to a circuit redesign because the physical action of that being shorted meant that the circuit would be off. So I've had to redesign the circuit to allow for the button to be the right way, but it's something that people have been wanting for a while. I've also physically disconnected the 34 volt rail from um, the output completely so there can't ever be any reverse current when this is turned off going through the inductor. We have a VREF bypass so if you've read Retro6.wiki on how to bring up the Game Gear to Red Light Boot you'll know that sometimes as a test in case your VREF isn't working to short VREF to ground link VBAT to 5 volts and see if the system boots. So instead of having to do that on every console you can now just flick the switch and do it all for you with the flick of a switch. Another useful feature is we now have an on delay so this is to counteract problems with EverDrives where they can't support consoles fast booting thanks to modern power supplies. The Game Gear boots up before the EverDrive and the EverDrive misses the boot up sequence and doesn't work. So this on delay will keep VREF out of boot for a delay period to allow the EverDrive to boot up. And then finally, we have fuses everywhere to protect every input and output circuit. So if there's ever an accidental short, like a very small number of the first batch where the battery ran under this cage and physically was touching this cage and causing this trace to burn out, that would now not happen because everything's fused, including the outputs, the inputs from the batteries, the charger, everything's fused. The board's also thicker in terms of copper. So there's three ounce copper on this now to sink a lot more heat. So when it's charging at full speed, it won't warm up as much as it did. The 5 volt output is now much smoother than it was as well. That's enough talk, let's get to testing this thing and how we bring this up. Inject the power. And you can see on this board, I have left the battery hardwired for now because the factory couldn't find a small push button. So in the final version, this will have a little push button probably here, where if you want to test if your batteries are good without having a multimeter, you can just insert the battery and press a little button here to turn that light on. So in this revision, the prototype, that light just simply comes on. So that's a good start, we have that. Current draws at two milliamps, which is literally just that light. And then using my awesome little multimeter, we sell these, we brought tons of them, just because I love them. They're like really small, really cheap, but actually really good for the price. So you can see it's got auto selection. So it basically scans between voltage AC, voltage DC, resistance and continuity. You don't have to touch anything. You just literally put the probes on. Let's also confirm that we have voltage on the battery input. And my bench is set to 4.002 volts and that's 4.02 so it's like 18 millivolts off which is great so we have voltage coming in what's the next test well let's turn it on and you can see now all the lights light up including the 34 volt rail which is actually a lot dimmer than the rest so i'll balance these leds out again to all match brightness and probably all be dimmer because that's quite bright you can see we have five volts on the output so the regulator's working even though the light's obviously telling us it is 34 volt is 34 volt and if we just turn off the 34 volt on the switch you can see the 34 volt light's gone off and you can see there there's literally no voltage whatsoever it's just complete open circuit one thing we will need to do first is solder a potentiometer on this on delay otherwise the vref pin will not work if we power on you can see it turns on the clean screen 
So if we just insert Sonic, just double check this is working. And you can see that's booted Sonic. So now we're happy with the power input. We can disconnect these wires and we'll use a real battery so that we'll get a nice smooth input. And then we'll do some oscilloscope probing to check the quality of the rails and the circuits and check the all function as expected. And we'll plug in a battery here. You can see the battery's now on. We'll inject five volts now. I'll set that up for five. And you can see here now the charge and USB are both on. And it's charging the battery at 1.8 amps. And if we bring in the thermal and check here, the hottest point is the charger IC. And you can see it's already balancing out around 50 Celsius. Whereas a previous one would do 90 Celsius easy. These are rated up to 120 Celsius anyway. But if we look at the rest of the board, as soon as you move away from the IC, it's 28 degrees. The wire going in, obviously, is the same, 40, 50 degrees, the trace running off. And if we leave this, you'll find an equilibrium where the temperature rises to a point and settles. But normally, most thermals rise fairly quickly and settle out fairly quickly. But I'll do some long-term thermal tests on this, but I can guarantee this will be fine. Mainly due to the reason that the previous design's fine, has been out for years and has less copper. So this will literally just run cooler. That's all we know. But now you can touch it with your finger and it's not even, it says it's 50 degrees on the thermal. You can't even feel that with your finger at the minute. So it's obviously uh, dissipating rapidly into the circuit board. If you disconnect the battery, what will happen is you'll get a flashing light on the charge, which is the battery charger telling us there's something wrong. There's no battery. So if you ever see that, check your battery connection. So I think there we're done with the bench. We can now just focus on oscilloscope probing the circuit in action and see what's going on. So now what is there to test? Well, we want to turn the actual console on and measure the smoothness of the five volt rail. You can see that's nice and clean and we're likely down to about 10 millivolts of noise there. So I'm happy with the five volt rail. And you can see there we're measuring 32 volts, which again is about right. And that's nice and smooth. So 34 volts working fine. The charger's working fine. The five volts stable. The VREF will show them in when we disconnect this board. So the only test really to do now is to have a look at this on delay. We want to kind of see the difference between the VREF pin and the five volt rail coming up. So for that, we need a second probe. And there we go, five volt and VREF. So you can see there, there's a huge delay there, which is what we wanted. But you can see here, let's have a look at the delay we currently have. So we have the five volt rising here, and then we have the uh, VREF here, which when it's high keeps the game gear in reset, but provides five volts to the system, hence like the EverDrive. And then how long until it comes down? Almost a second delay at the minute, 700 millivolts. So that's plenty of delay for the system to boot. So if we kept that as a reference point, 700 millivolts, all we should have to do is tune this delay now. So if I just turn this to one extreme, I'm not sure which side this is soldered to. And we turn off and wait for it to go. And turn back on again. You can see there we have a delay of 1.2 seconds now. So you can see the delay is working, which you'll never need a 1.2 second delay. So I can probably tune this down to turn on and off faster. And that's just changing this potentiometer. I've put like a 470K on, probably needs to be a lot less. So let's just go the other extreme now. Let's go all the way down to the fastest boot time, which is also dictated by a little resistor here that I've set as the default uh, fast time, which again, I can tune based on what we see here. If I now turn it off, run the scope again, turn it on, and you can see there now 180 milliseconds. So to be honest, that's probably tuned just right because 180 milliseconds is you know one fifth of a second. So let's just test this in a regular board not a VA45. And let's turn the delay to maximum so you can visually see. If we turn on, see there's a good one second delay there between the red light and the turn on. And if we turn this down and then turn on, you can see we get instant red light. So that's instant red light. Tune the delay up to maximum, turn on. And you get a good one second delay. So I think that circuit's working perfectly fine. The only thing I don't like is see how you get a really quick, or sometimes you'll get a really quick red light flicker on and off. See that quick flicker? That is likely just because the five volt rail's coming up 
and then the VREF has to come up as well. I might have a delay circuit, funnily enough, where the VREF goes high first, then the five volt rail comes up, and then the VREF drops. So they never, you know, cross over at the same point. That will prevent this kind of double flicker of the power light, which doesn't always happen, but it's based on timing. That little double flicker there. And I think that's probably more due to the fact that the console's still got some charge and this has still got some capacitance in. So if we maybe lay it settle for a few seconds. Yep, and it doesn't happen. Turn off and wait, let everything settle again. I think it's possibly just quick on and off scores that actually. No, so it is there. So I'll probably add a little feature where, as you've seen with the 5 volt and the VREF, we'll make the VREF start here, then the 5 volt come in later, and then the VREF drop later. So there's never a crossover where the VREF is low while the 5 volt's rising. But other than that, this entire circuit seems to work, and there's not really anything to change. So that's a prototype that's worked first time. And as always, guys, let me know if this is interesting to you, showing you that the kind of hardware stages and the prototypes and the bring-ups, I don't normally show this stuff. I normally just get this to market, but I think a lot of you guys have expressed that you like to kind of see the, the build-up and the initial prototypes and things not working and how I solve them. Let me know if you like these kind of videos, and I'll continue to make them. I hope you found this interesting, and I'll catch you in the next one.